Now that I moved into a house, I wanted to find a good solution for being able to stream audio to multiple rooms in the house. I knew that Sonos was always a good option, but their equipment is expensive and can add up pretty quickly, especially once you start adding more than a couple of rooms. Plus, I wanted to be able to incorporate the different speakers I already owned. Now, I already had some Apple TVs hooked up around the house, but knew that wouldn't work because you can't play the same music in multiple rooms at the same time using AirPlay. There is a workaround for that that you can do with a piece of software called Airfoil, which I used a lot in the past, but in my experience with it, there would always be sync issues that popped up where the music in one room would be slightly ahead or behind the other, and it would break the continuity of the music. No good. So having read that Google's Chromecast audios could do multi-room audio and the fact that they supported the main apps I use for music, Spotify, YouTube, and Digitally Imported, not to mention that the devices only cost 35 bucks, I decided to pick up a few and see how they'd work out. So let's take a closer look at the device, then show you how I implemented them around my own house, and finally go over a few of the best use scenarios for your own situation, and cover some of the pros and cons, as well as what I learned from using Chromecast as a multi-room home audio solution. So here is what you get in the box. You get a really long USB power cable. This is about six feet long, and um, you powers the device off of USB. The thing to note about that is if you have a device or a set of speakers or something with a USB power port nearby, you can just plug the um, Chromecast directly into that. You won't really need this cable. You just have to get like a shorter USB cable to attach for that. Now you get one really short 3.5 millimeter auxiliary cable and um, you get the actual puck itself. So the puck itself, there's really not too much to it. Um, you have USB power, like I mentioned here, a reset button right there or a reboot button. Um, there's a small LED uh, indicator light here. And then of course you have your audio output here. So you can output it three different three different ways. Actually, you can go with the auxiliary cable here, which is auxiliary to auxiliary. So you can also do this to RCAs if you have that cable. And then the final way is that this is actually an optical audio output as well. Um, and the way you kind of get that is you just got to get one of these optical audio cables, which is your standard one with kind of like the squarish end on it. So that's your standard audio end. And then you get the one with, I don't know what this is called. It's just like a longer male end. And uh, you plug it in to the puck here and then you'll have a digital audio output with the Chromecast, which is nice because it keeps the signal all digital. So how do you actually stream music or audio to the device? Um, well, th there's a couple main uh, ways to do it. One is through apps, so like I mentioned, Spotify, which is really popular and, and an app I use really a lot, um, supports the Chromecast. So anytime you launch any of these apps, and there's a lot more supported online, Tidal being one of them I tested out with, and that works really nice too. So either when your app supports it, you'll see a little icon where you can stream to the Chromecasts. And you know the other way to do it is if you use a, the Chrome browser. The Chrome browser has an extension where you can cast to individual Chromecast audios or to them all as a group, which is nice. So kind of any streaming service or music that you or audio you might listen to through your Chrome browser, you can output it to the Chromecast audios. Uh, so I'm gonna show you how I hooked up all these Chromecasts around my place and then do a little uh, walkthrough audio demo so you can kind of get a sense of what it sounds like. So the first place I have hooked up is here in the garage to so my old receiver. And um, all I did was I plugged it in here and this goes into one of the um, audio inputs in the back. I think I have, well, it's to D the DVD because I only have three optical audio inputs on the back of this. One's DVD, one's CD, and one I think is uh, TV or something. Anyway, so I have that hooked up in the garage and um, so I have a few speakers around the garage. There, there, and there. Now the second place I have it hooked up is here in my basement. So I have these uh, Van 2s, which I used to use on my uh, computer. But now I just use headphones, so I'm, I'm using this to listen to music until I get my uh, surround sound hooked up in here. But in the meantime, what I do is I have a Chromecast hooked up to them and uh, a sub as well. But you can see here's the puck, and then I use the uh, optical audio output here to go to the back of the Van 2s. Let's see if I can, you know, it has optical input in the back. so. That works for uh, my main speaker system here down in the basement for now. So the third speaker I have just temporarily here in the living room um, because I don't have any speakers in my living room TV yet, or at least not like a system, is uh, I have it hooked up to this Monoprice Bluetooth uh, party speaker, which I did a review on earlier. It's, still, it's pretty awesome, but there's one drawback I found, which is the USB port here it doesn't power the Chromecast. It doesn't output enough power. so. Unfortunately, you still have to have an outlet to be able to use this. Now you could get the Ion Block Rocker, which has USB port as well. It's able to um, 
power a device or recharge your you know mobile devices so that's kind of cool so what you would be able to have instead of having to have this in an outlet you just plug in the usb port and then you'd have a totally kind of portable system or a portable speaker to be able to use with all the chromecast audios so if you wanted to for example you know bring that out in the backyard or even in the driveway it gives you um, some flexibility to be able to move the speaker around without really needing an ac outlet so the fourth and final speaker i have is here set up in the bedroom it's just a Jawbone jam box, and it happens to have an auxiliary port in on it. So I hooked up the Chromecast to that, and you can see, I mean, I have a lot of wires back here. I should probably take my own advice on, but I don't really have upstairs set up yet. Uh, anyway, but that's my fourth and final speaker. So now that we kind of took a look at the Chromecast, I wanted to do a walkthrough of what it's like to have all the Chromecasts hooked up in, in your house. So I have it in four different rooms. I wish I had a couple more, but it's uh, limited on the number of speakers I have available, but um, I wanted to do a walkthrough of just music playing in one room so you can get a sense of what it's like when you normally play music, or how a lot of people play music in their house, was just cranking it up in one room so they can hear it throughout, rather than having the music directly in every room. So I'm going to do a walkthrough like that, and then, and then we're going to compare that to what it sounds like when we walk through when all the music's playing in every room. So hopefully that gives you a pretty good sense of the difference. Alright, so the first thing I'll do uh, is start the music. All right, so this is just in the basement. I got the Vanitus hooked up here with the sub and my Chromecast. All right, so you can hear it a little bit in the living room, obviously. Um, but then, you know, when you go upstairs, okay, I mean, you can hear it up here, you know. There's some bass and stuff, but that's really it. Then what we're gonna do now is I'm going to uh, switch it on over to full house mode. Or rather just my home group. So home. So now we got it in the garage. So the other thing that's cool is you can, if you have them hooked up to portable speakers like I do, you can move them all around the house as needed. So that's the basement. You can see I moved this one outside. So we should get music outside if we want, just by moving that speaker. So that's kind of cool. Now ideally I'd have uh, stereo system my TV and then I would Chromecast that so this would be this room would be taken care of but I don't have that hooked up yet all right and I just want to show you how easy it is to kind of move so if you think you know you're having a party and you want to move some of these speakers all you have to do is unplug this guy and let's say I want to put it in the bathroom keep the vibe going of the party you know um, I just plug
plug this in. Now what's cool about it is after it reboots there, it will always just find the network in my experience or the home group and just start playing. Turn your volume up. It just takes a minute. There it goes. So like I said, it just takes a minute. Um, so it's kind of cool to be able to move those. You move one in the kitchen or whatever. I only have four. Ideally, I would have a few more. So you can kind of get a feel of like the continuousness of the music from room to room, which I think is awesome. And I had this turned down, if you remember, but... That's kind of it. That's like a home, whole home audio using the Chromecast audios. All right, so unfortunately the video was getting kind of long, so I'm gonna have to split this into two parts, I'm sorry. Uh, so in the second part, I'll go ahead and show all the controls and how I have uh, everything set up on my phone and just demo the apps and what they look like and what, you, what it looks like to use Google Chrome to stream, your, uh, to stream uh, your audio from online to the Chromecast and just to go over the different things and hopefully answer all uh, your questions you might have about using this in your, in your own setup. If you want to watch part two, go ahead and click here. Otherwise, thanks a lot for watching.